Uh, everyone, so my name is uh, Ashraf uh, Siddiq. I'm a research uh, scientist within uh, Credit Agricole Corporate and Investment Bank. And today I'm going to show you how uh, Credit Agricole CIB is at the forefront of quantum computing for the financial industry. And this work? Okay, perfect. So I'm going to start by uh, telling you a little bit more about who we are and why do we need uh, quantum computing. And then I'm going to show you uh, a real business use case about the application of quantum computers into uh, finance. And we have actually first of a kind uh, results in the world of an application of quantum computers to uh, finance use case. So about who we are. So Credit Agricole Corporate and Investment Bank is actually the corporate and investment uh, banking division of the group uh, Credit Agricole. So the group Credit Agricole is a French uh, bank, which has actually, uh, that which is, which is uh, the tenth uh, largest bank in the world in terms of uh, assets as of uh, this year. So as a corporate and investment uh, bank, our customers are mainly uh, corporates, financial institutions, and uh, sovereigns. We have more than 7,000 uh, customers. And we are mainly implemented uh, in Europe as a French bank, but we have also a presence in Asia, in uh, countries of America, and in the Middle East and North Africa. So you may be now wondering why, as a bank, we would need uh, quantum computing. Well, actually, banks in general, and uh, Creative Agricole in particular, uh, have a lot of computations that are run on a daily basis. Uh, and these computations are actually made to solve a lot of different types of problems. We can cite, for instance, uh, pricing financial uh, instruments. For instance, we can need to, pri to have uh, the accurate uh, price of a teller made payoffs uh, of, for instance, equities, bonds, option, or other financial products. We can also have applications to portfolio optimization. Uh, actually, we need for sometimes to know what is the uh, best uh, or optimal allocation of assets in our portfolio. We can also uh, run daily computations and daily complex computations for um, risk estimation, uh, like tail risk uh, or sensitivities to risk factors or other uh, estimations of risk. Um, and actually, the use case I'm going to present you later is an application to a risk uh, world. And also, we have other models like uh, rating models, asset-dependent, loss-given default models, correlation, and volatility models. So as you may have noticed, uh, so the uh, speed and the accuracy of the computations that we have are key to perform in the financial industry. Failing, indeed, to deliver fast and accurate computations may lead to financial and commercial losses to the bank. And so banks in general, and uh, Credit Agricole, uh, CIB in particular, use a set of complex quantitative algorithms. Uh, we use also sophisticated hardware and high computation capacity to achieve our computation that we run, uh, as I said, on a daily basis. And uh, the models and uh, the set we have uh, so far is acceptable in terms of precision and speed. But as quantum computers uh, step by and bring the promise of disruptive uh, computation capacity, we at Credit Agricole CIB, we have launched different projects aiming to implement real-world financial use cases into and on quantum computers. And so when we initiated our uh, phase of implementation of uh, uh, real-world use cases into quantum computers, our objectives were the following. First, we wanted to explore the technology, uh, to explore quantum computers and quantum computing, and see what is its ability to bring value to our financial problems and our computations. Second, we wanted to have uh, to, pre uh, to prepare the future for CASIB and to prefer to have uh, uh, staff that is uh, well prepared to um, well ac uh, accurated and educated to uh, to know these technologies and to to use it uh, in the future. And finally, we wanted also to build relationships with the ecosystem, uh, like uh, hardware and software vendors, academia, investors, and other public uh, institutions. 
So the use case, let me now present you a, a success story about the application of content computers uh, into a business uh, a real world use case. Uh, let me first of all present to you the use case. So the use case is what we call the early signal uh, model. So actually, we as a bank, one of our main tasks is to lend uh, money to uh, our clients. Okay. So once a credit is granted, uh, it is important uh, for us as a bank to see and to um, evaluate how the situation of our customer, of our client will evolve in the future. Indeed, if the situation of the client uh, will downgrade in the future, the client uh, can find it, uh, itself in the situation where he cannot uh, reimburse back uh, the credit, and this represents a major risk for us, even though it is a rare event. So we, in the uh, modeling risk modeling division, we built a model that we call the early signal model, and the goal of this model is actually to predict uh, clients though, whose uh, situation will be uh, downgraded in the future as compared to those who are not. And uh, this is actually done uh, through a machine learning algorithm. And actually this is for those who are familiar with machine learning uh, literature, a binary classification task. Uh, so we want to know if the, uh, the client is a fallen angel, that is a client that will be downgraded or not. Okay, so from a classical point of view, like, I mean, without getting first into the, uh, the, uh, the uh, quantum uh, part, I'm gonna go to that uh, in, a few, in a few minutes. Actually, uh, our model, the industrial model that we used, is uh, built on a historical data set that contains features about uh, credit rating of the clients, uh, financial statements, uh, market data, and a lot also of, of information about the clients. And the model, actually, the machine learning model, tries to learn patterns that are specific to uh, falling angels, that is, the clients that will be downgraded. And uh, as you may uh, notice, so different models, different learning models can, can be built. Um, and so uh, we can like use, for instance, decision trees. Uh, that's what we use in, uh, in, an, in our industrial uh, environment. And uh, like we can have different models based on different uh, criteria and subsets of criteria. This is what we call a weak learners. Okay, so a weak learner is a simple like a model that is built on uh, an ensemble of uh, criteria or a subset of uh, of criteria. Uh, so one task that we have is actually uh, not only to uh, to use one weak learner, but to aggregate these weak learners because. In general, they will give us a better performance. Okay, so we need actually uh, we can we uh, our problem is to search for a combination of weak learners, like to find the best weak learners that will give the aggregate uh, performance. Okay, so this is as you have noticed a combinatorial optimization task. We have different weak learners, and we need to find like the best uh, weak learners between these to have the best aggregate model. And so in our industrial environment, we had a model with uh, 1,200 weak learners. And uh, we wanted actually to transpose this uh, use case into the quantum world. And so in uh, collaboration with our uh, partners, Multiverse Computing and Pascal, Pascal actually uh, provided us a hardware, a quantum hardware uh, based on uh, natural atoms. Uh, they made a presentation this morning. Maybe you have uh, had information about that. Otherwise, they have a booth if you want to have uh, more information about the natural atoms uh, technology that they use. And uh, also with Multiverse, who have provided us um, algorithmic support uh, to this end, we have built um, a quantum machine learning algorithm that will allow us actually to go from the uh, classical, like uh, classical computers world, into the uh, quantum computing world. And so the idea here is to find the optimal model that can be implemented on the quantum uh, computer. And we find, we came out with an innovative um, uh, algorithm, quantum machine learning algorithm, that we call quantum boosting with time series uh, subsampling. The idea here is to have a set of weak learners. And these weak learners uh, present different uh, specificities. First of all, they are trained on different time series subsets 
to make them as correlate, uncorrelated as possible. They are also trained in a boosting mode. That, is, uh, that means that each weak learner is uh, trained by taking into account the error that the previous weak learner has made on, uh, in prediction. Okay? So this allows us to have a set of weak learners. And so uh, these weak learners, actually we, have, we, we need to train as much weak learners as uh, qubits that we have on the, uh, on the quantum hardware. So during the life of the project, we started with uh, 10 qubits and then 15 qubits, and then we went until 15 qubits. Um, and I'm going to show you uh, in a few seconds the results that we found on uh, 50 qubits. 50, that's 50 physical uh, qubits. And so this is actually the, uh, the set that allows us to have the weak learners uh, that we uh, actually send at the end. So we, we trained a set of weak learners, and then we send these weak learners into the quantum uh, hardware. We start by what we call a cubo. Actually, a cubo is a kind of a correlation matrix of the predictions of the uh, different uh, weak learners. And then there's an embedding of atoms that is uh, made in order to, uh, to switch the problem from the financial world into the physical quantum uh, hardware, uh, hardware world. And then we'll let the quantum hardware system uh, trend, tend into a minimal energy state. And this minimal energy state gives us the minimum of our cost function, which gives us actually the best and optimal solution for uh, this problem. And here are the results. And so, uh, as I said, our objectives were to uh, find, the, first of all, the, most, uh, the optimal uh, um, uh, model to run on a QPU. We actually done at the same time also uh, optimization of the, cl uh, the classifiers and also the optimization of the parameters of the classifiers. We've done all that on the, on the quantum hardware. And our results, our main results are as follows. Actually, uh, we uh, find results on QPU that match the performance of the, the state-of-the-art uh, industrial solution. That is actually, uh, the, uh, on, uh, on your uh, right side, you see here the, uh, the results, uh, the performance we have with uh, the classical uh, solution. And on the left side, you have the, uh, the, uh, yeah, the solution with the quantum uh, computer. So actually, as you see, we have similar performance with, uh, both, uh, with both devices. And most importantly is that here we use less learners we switched actually from 1,200 uh, 1, learners on the classical computer to only 50 learners, that is also 50 qubits, okay, on the uh, quantum hardware. And we have a similar performance. And so doing this, we found actually we had a model that is uh, more interpretable, uh, faster to, to, to run. And uh, so actually uh, we passed as a we gone from, as uh, is written there, from a model that, is, uh, that runs in three hours to a model that runs in only one hour. Okay? And so, as, uh, yeah, so this is actually, as we said, as I said, this is like the first of the kind of results uh, in a world of application on a quantum, like physical, really quantum hardware uh, for um, um, uh, quantum machine learning applied to uh, risk management uh, uh, application. So to sum up, um, so our main objectives when we started the, the project was to uh, apply real world uh, business use cases on a quantum hardware. So we worked on this uh, project, like the use case I presented for more than a year with our partners, uh, Pascal and Multiverse. And uh, we find actually our results was, uh, we validated the, cap uh, the ability of quantum computer to replicate the results of a state-of-the-art uh, predictive uh, model for a business uh, use case in risk management. Uh, we improved uh, considerably the running time and the execution times of, uh, of the model. We went from three hours running time to one hour running time, which is very important for us, especially for the models we run on a daily basis. That is very important. Uh, also, we achieved uh, from our staffing, for our staffing uh, teams the, the objective of becoming more familiar with quantum concepts, quantum, uh, quantum hardware and uh, software, and we improved our know-how in this field. 
So our next steps will be to uh, generalize this application and our uh, knowledge to other use cases, other, uh, other financial business use cases, and to, strength, uh, to strengthen uh, more our relationships with the ecosystem of uh, quantum computing. So thank you a lot for your uh, attention. Sure. Okay, a learner is actually a weak model, and a weak model here is, uh, is it can be actually whatever model, whatever statistical or machine learning model uh, it can. And here our case is a decision tree model. Actually, you can have whatever predictive model, it can be a linear regression, a logistic regression, uh, whatever, a decision tree, this is a predictive model. Right, so when you say you have 50 learners, like an ensemble of 50? Exactly, exactly, that's it. Exactly. Sure. Okay, can you say it again? I didn't hear you well. What was the reason that the <laughs> Well, the reason is actually uh, is actually we have a better um, uh, we can say that we have a better optimization uh, result. We have actually it's like we have a new uh, full set. Of uh, at the same time, it is actually a mixture between the results we have on a quantum machine learning point of view, so a better algorithm of quantum machine learning, and then also from an optimization point of view, so the use of the quantum hardware allowed us to explore uh, some uh, some uh, combination that maybe we were not able to explore at uh, a classical computer. So you found better locally. Exactly. Sure. Many questions here. Please. Hi. Yeah. Um, so, did I understand it right that what the um, machine learning model is learning is the probability that an edge will be downgraded? Right. Um, how does that compare to um, not you know, like traditional statistical techniques of machine learning? Have you tried? I didn't hear you well. The last right. part? Traditional statistical techniques, so no machine learning models, but. Uh, ah, statistical techniques. Well, actually, we have tried uh, lots, and from a classical point of view, in our uh, risk modeling division, we have tried lots of uh, models. We started by simple models, and then we went into uh, quantum machine learning. So when I say simple uh, model, this is a binary classification task that could be like a logistic regression, for, for instance. And for sure, uh, machine learning models, they are better, and they have um, better predictive performance than the classical uh, models. So we started with that, we've done the, uh, the, uh, the machine learning, and then we, again, we went into the part of quantum machine learning and uh, quantum uh, machine learning optimization. Do you have a number of a much better the machine learning model or the logistic regression? I think I don't have like a clear, like perfectly result, but I can say it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's much better. Okay, yes. Exactly, it's a random forest. random forest. Right, it's a random forest uh, algorithm. Random forest, for those who don't know, it, this is actually an, an aggregation method that allows that we have uh, different uh, weak learners and we make them vote, actually. It, it was, uh, like if we have, for instance, let's say 50 weak learners, like uh, it is a vote. If uh, 26 say it, uh, it will be downgraded, that's a majority vote, and we can say that's, uh, that will be downgraded. Sure. Right. Models, was it just a feature of less of learners in that case? I mean, I think 50 is still a lot of uh, complex to interpret still, but was that just based on the number of learners? Is that because of the comment? Well, it's mainly the number, the mainly, as, as I said it here, is mainly the number of learners. If you go from 100 and uh, to like to, uh, yeah, 1,200 uh, learners, and to, to try to, to want to explain each of them. And you go to 50 for sure. You have uh, better explainability if you try to explain uh, each one of them. But we have also, yeah, in terms of um, well, in terms of like the uh, let's say the impact of the features is still as good as the uh, as the uh, the classical uh, algorithm. Welcome.